Lights. Camera. Galley. Hello, folks, and welcome back to Four Corners of the Galley Sports and Jackets. And on this week, we're doing week three of the NFL recap. That's right, folks. First two weeks are in the books. Now we're moving on to week three. Before we move on to week three, all I really want to say about all the controversial things that happen pre-football is football is all about unity. It's all about people from all walks of life, creed, color, sex, religion, all coming together and playing a sport they love and watching a sport they love. That's all, folks. All right. Now let's move on to the action. This week we started off on Thursday Night Football in the Bay Area as we saw the Los Angeles Rams take on the San Francisco 49ers in a great matchup. I mean, we're talking one of the best games to ever happen on Thursday Night Football. 41-39 to Rams. Close game. Well-fought battle. Jared Goff showed up. Came to play, Sammy Watkins, welcome to the Rams. Two big touchdowns, Mr. Todd Gurley just expanding on his great season that he's having already. Obviously, you can tell with a good quarterback and some weapons around Mr. Gurley, he's looking great. Uh, you had uh, the Niners looking good, Carlos Hyde still looking great, Pierre Garçon with a ton of yards. I mean, great game. No defense, but great game. Definitely a good start for the week. All right. Well, now let's move on to the Sunday games. And the one big theme you can definitely say about this week's games are there was no defense. All right, well, let's jump on to it. So this week, the NFL started on Sunday morning in London, baby. Yeah, that's right. We went back to London where the Jacksonville Jaguars, who should be called the London Jaguars, take on the Baltimore Ravens. This is the Ravens' first trip to London. And I think it kind of could tell in the score. 44-7. to Jaguars. Honestly, I don't know what Jaguar team's going to show up one week. Last week against the Titans, they looked like they were lost. And this week, they came out and they looked like they were hitting on all cylinders. Interceptions, left and right. Blake Broyles didn't throw an interception. Looked amazing. Mercedes Lewis came back from the dead. Welcome back, sir. And it was a great game. Now, the Ravens, I think they got lost in that whole London shuffle. There's next week, and unlike years before where they would give teams a bye after the London game, they're going right back to playing, so this will be interesting. And there's another game in London this coming week, so we'll see how that works out. After that, we had the game that I previewed. You had the Indianapolis Colts take it on the Cleveland Browns. And a much better game, I might say. 31-28 to Colts. Not bad. Now, you have Mr. Jacob Brissett. Two rushing touchdowns. Hey, and he figured out he's got a giant weapon in T.Y. Hilton. He got off this game. A whole ton of yards. I'm thinking 178 and a touchdown. Very nice. And Deshaun Kaiser, welcome back. Looking pretty good. There was a lot of fourth quarter comebacks, but you did look good. And you're looking impressive for the Browns. I know the Browns fans got to be a little happy that they have a quarterback that knows what he's doing. All right, now we're going to move on to... And now we're moving on to Buffalo. We had the Denver Broncos taking on the Buffalo Bills. And man, like I've told you before, that Buffalo Bills defense is no joke. And it came to play today, 26-16 to Buffalo. Trevor Simeon with two interceptions. Woo! I told you it was for real. They came out to play, and Simeon looked good in the, last, the first two games going 2-0. and And he went to Buffalo and got eight up. Tyron Taylor showed up, so their offense is starting to click, even though they lost a lot of players. They still got Charles Clay, who looked pretty nice for the tight end, so that was a good game. Bills look legit. Got to watch out for that. Next game on the docket, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Chicago Bears. Old school slugfest between two of the old and mighty of the NFL, and it lived up to the billing. A little ugly, but we had a good result with going overtime. Bears 23, Steelers 17 on a touchdown run in by John Jordan Howard, who was running wild on the Steelers this week. Pretty impressive. Roethlisberger, he was struggling the game out, that Steeler defense. Uh, but the Bears are a lot better than you would think, people. I mean, Mike Glenn is starting to click there, and it's starting to really move forward. So it's kind of impressive. Got to see what Chicago can do. Not bad. Then we move on to the... Detroit Lions taking on the Atlanta Falcons. 2-0 versus 2-0. And let's just say 
Matter of fact, this game lived up to all the billings that it was supposed to. You got the Atlanta Falcons winning 30 to 26. Now, some might know I'm a big Lions fan, so I'm a little heartbroken because it should have been Lions 33, Falcons 26, but we won't get into that. Last second controversial call. It looked like a touchdown to me. Of course, I'm biased. But I must say, this game was impressive. Uh, back and forth scoring left and right. Falcons came out, really hit Lions in the mouth. Lions came back, shut down Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan threw his first interception in 329 passes. And not one, not two, but three interceptions we took from they took from Matt Ryan. Impressive. Uh, Stafford did exactly what he did. Drove his team down the field. Last two minutes of the game, Mr. Captain comeback. And the officials took it all away. So... I don't know. Let's just hope that's a preview for the NFC title game. <laughs> I can dream, can't I? <laughs> and then we're moving on to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Now, I thought this was really going to be a big-time competitive game. Tampa Bay looked good. Vikings, they, you know, they look really good. They have Case Keenum starting to get a quarterback. But old Mr. Jameis Winston and his turnover showed up for this one. He threw two, three interceptions and really took him out of the game. And then, all of a sudden, Case Keenum found all these weapons he forgot he had in Minnesota. Mr. Stephon Diggs, <laughs> two touchdowns, 180-something yards, man. Dalvin Cook, welcome to the league, got his first touchdowns over 100 yards on the ground. Vikings got some serious weapons. You can see why AP's not playing there no more. Man, big things to look out for. And then we move on to a game where you'd think it would have been a blowout. But it really didn't turn out that way. You got the Houston Texans taking on the New England Patriots in New England. Now, this is there's some history here. Houston's gone to New England quite a few times and lost every single time and not good. This time, Houston came to play and that defense showed up. 36-33 Patriots. And they were losing. I mean, Tom Brady had to score five touchdowns to beat these guys. We must say, though, I think the Texans have found their quarterback in Mr. Deshaun Watson. He is for real. Great game by the Texans, but, man, Mr. Tom Brady, five touchdowns, five rings. Sometimes the Patriots can be a little scary. Was a good game, though, for sure. And then we move on to the Miami Dolphins taking on the New York Jets. I'm pretty surprised by what happened in this game. I think a lot of people are. 20 to six Jets? The Jets showed up. The defense showed up. Color looked a little bit like old color trying to gunsling it everywhere, but the Jets showed up. Defense looked good. Ryan Anderson with a nice bomb pass. They got him out there, but the defense was the main story. I mean, I know I said a lot of these games were pretty big blowouts and a lot of offense, but for this one, got to give it to the Jets. Got to wait and see if that was just a one-game anomaly because it's a division AFC East game or if there's more to come. Have to wait and see. And then we got to a really fun game where we had the Eagles taking on the New York Giants. Now, this is classic NFC East battle where they just beat each other up and they hate each other. This was a good game back and forth. It looked like the Eagles were going to blow them out. And then, man, as bad as you want to say Eli is, you got to give his receivers all the credit in the world. Welcome back, Mr. Odell Beckham Jr. Two touchdowns, one-handed off all, having a little fun with himself in the in the end zone like always. But for all that, it really didn't matter because the Eagles, with the game on the line, go for a 61-yard field goal and make it. Man gets carried off the field like he was Rudy. Woo! Haven't seen that in a while. That was pretty crazy. Good game. Definitely good game. Eagles 27, Giants 24. Hmm. And then the last game of the morning, you got the New Orleans Saints taking on the Carolina Panthers. Another divisional game. You got the NFC South going at it. And, you know, the way the Saints have been going, you really thought they were just going to go into uh, to Carolina and not do good. Nope. Drew Brees showed up, and so did the defense. 34-13 to Saints. Man, it was old man quarterback today. Tom Brady going wild. Drew Brees going wild. Case Keenan. I mean, just old guys looking good. I don't know about Cam. He doesn't look that good. He looks a little, still looks like he's hurt. McCaffrey looked amazing. He had over 100 yards all purpose. That was looking nice. But, I mean, they almost lost Calvin Benjamin. We have to wait and see what happens with that. He's losing a lot of weapons here and there. So, that doesn't help when Cam's not looking that good. More to come for that one. All right. Well, that's the end of the morning games. So now let's check in with our man on the streets, RG.
Take it away. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm RG, back from Four Corners of Galley, and we're here on the spot with this lovely lady on the street. How are you doing, man? I'm doing awesome. How are you? Good. Let's get ready with the questions. First question of the day. What two teams are going to the Super Bowl this year? I would say my Cowboys, but, you know, who knows, because Ezekiel Elliott's been out. So, maybe, supposedly, Raiders, or, I don't know. The other team, I'd maybe say Seahawks, but I don't don't know. Raiders, Seahawks, you hear to her first. (laughs) Next question. Why do the Cowboys always choke in the playoffs? Because... Uh, Romo's uh, uh, Butterfingers, but who knows? I don't know. Mm. But uh, they do have a new quarterback, though. So. Butterfingers. Butterfingers. Next question. <laughs> Which is your favorite what brother? JJ, TJ, or Derek? Derek. Derek. Okay. Next question. Is it true that you kiss a poster of Tony Romo at night? <laughs> um, I plead fifth. <laughs> She pleads a fifth. And there you have it, folks. There are your on-the-spot questions. Back at the office. See you, PG, Pebo. Well, thank you very much, RG. That was a great interview. Nice questions. And it's uh, Pebo. Remember that. All right. Now let's move on to the afternoon games. And first up, you got the Seattle Seahawks traveling to Tennessee Titans. In a game that was a big-time slow fest in the beginning and was a lot of defense and it didn't look like it was going to go nowhere, Turned into a 33-27 to Titan game. All of a sudden, second half, offense exploded. Marcus Mariota looked amazing. Players all over the place, flying up and down the field, throwing touchdowns, running wild. DeMarco Murray with a 75-yard run, looking great, filling that fountain of youth. Then you got Russell Wilson doing his classic comeback, trying to bring him back all the way back from the dead. He almost got there. I mean, this game did go without his controversy. Richard Sherman was playing like a wild man all over the field, and there was all kinds of craziness, but... Still at the end, the Titans won and the Seahawks still aren't that good on the road. Definitely have to see the way it works out. So the next game, we got the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Green Bay Packers. I know what you're thinking. Blowout. Wrong. Surprisingly wrong. New England, I'm sorry, Green Bay 27, Cincinnati Bengals 24. And the Bengals were winning. They got the first touchdown of the game of the season finally. Mr. A.J. Green scored it. Joe Mixon looked great. But good old Aaron Rodgers, he had to bring him back. And he wasn't going to lose to the Bengals and and Lambeau for sure. You knew that was going to happen. Was a good game, though. All the way down to the last play. Must admit, very good game. And then you got the Kansas City Chiefs taking on the Los Angeles Chargers. And the Los Angeles Chargers have been the... Bad luck team so far this year. Real close games, not pulling it out. But this time, nah, they lost by more. 24 to 10 Chiefs. Chiefs look legit. Alex Smith is playing out of his mind. He's playing better than I've ever seen him play. He's got tons of weapons around him. Chiefs look good. That defense has always been good. But I think Andy Reid has finally put all the pieces together in uh, Kansas City finally. And they look pretty scary. Got to watch out for things to come. And then we got the last game of the night in the capital. You got the Raiders taking on the Washington Redskins. And I'm man, I thought this was going to be a great game. I thought they were going to go back and forth. Derek Carr looking like an MVP. Huh? 27 to 10 Redskins? It was 21 nothing before halftime. I mean, I was shocked. It's like the Raiders didn't even get off the plane. It was, was primetime. They were, they were going to be great. Kirk Cousin looked amazing. Throwing passes everywhere. Man, he looked good. Chris Thompson looking like a beast out there. I don't know. Raiders just didn't show up. Have to move on to next week after that one. Man, for sure. All right. Now let's take us out to our Monday Night Correspondent for our last game of the week. Well, hopefully we'll find AG before next week. I don't know where she could have gone. Well, I know if she was here in spirit, she would definitely want the Cardinals over those Cowboys. Well, I'd like to thank you guys for joining me on this edition of uh, Full Corners of the Galley Sports and Jacket NFL Recap. I'd like to thank Mr. RG, Mrs. AG. Hopefully we'll see you soon. I'm Peebo. Good night, Ted.